homeless, homeless advocate, Eric Johnson Shepchuk, coming at you. Now, over the years of my advocacy, I've heard some of the same questions again and again. I've decided to take a few minutes to answer those questions for you. So question number one is, how do you fix the problem of homelessness? Well, the answer seems quite simple. You need housing. But of course, that housing has to be affordable. So in the federal government, we have what's called the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And HUD, uh, as it's often called, is has defined affordable housing as housing that can be afforded with 30% or less of a person's income. Now HUD has also divided the nation into districts of about 10 counties per district. And in each of those districts, HUD determines the AMI, or the Area Median Income. And HUD has also determined that if you make less than 80% of the AMI, then, then you are low income. So let's do some math. Here in Washington, D.C., our AMI is $110,000. 80% of that is $88,000. Now, you work about 2,000 hours a year, so that's $44 an hour. And if you make that kind of money, $88,000 a year, then 30% of that is $26,400, or about $2,200 a month. Now, landlords are motivated to bring in renters who make some who can pay something close to two thousand two hundred dollars a month give or take and anybody who who makes far less than that landlords are not even thinking about and so why can't we end homelessness or what does it take to end homelessness well plain and simple either you have to get it to a place where the majority of the homeless are making $44 an hour, which is not reality, or you have to bring the rents down and stabilize them at a certain level, or you have to have a lot of subsidized housing. Question number two, why can't you get a job like everyone else? Well, quite frankly, because a job won't do it. Like I said earlier, it takes $44 an hour to pay DC rents. Uh, the minimum wage in DC is $13.25 an hour. So you have to have about three and a half jobs, full-time jobs, to pay DC rents. That's working 140 hours a week, 20 hours a day. Uh, you spend the other four hours traveling between jobs. So when the heck do you sleep? It is physically impossible for you to work that many hours in order to pay rent. So. Let me take you back a few years. Uh, it was 1988, I began working at Shands Hospital in Gainesville, Florida, where I stayed for six years. And at that time, I made 5.07 an hour starting. Minimum wage back then was 3.35 an hour. So I made a little bit more than minimum wage, but even so, I was able to pay my rent. My, my place was not subsidized and minimum wage used to enable you to pay the rent but that's no longer the case i say all that to make the point that even though i made a little above minimum wage i i was able to take care of myself without government assistance and we need to get back to a place where the minimum wage actually does enable you to pay the rent and so when you ask how it is how is it that you end homelessness well, there you have it. Let's get to a place where getting one full-time job pays the rent. And as for why people won't just get jobs and get out of homelessness, well, the homeless who are unemployed, in many cases, just realize that getting that job will not get them out of homelessness. Many of them will, will never make anything close to what it takes to pay the rent in their area. And, and so, there's no point in starting a journey that you realize you can't finish. Okay, so my third and final question as I wind down here, the one that got me on the map, by the way, is how can a homeless person have a cell phone? Well, back in 2010, I was on CNN and I was asked this very question. How could I have a cell phone? Now, I should say that at that time, a homeless person with a cell phone was the exception and not the rule. But I got to give kudos to the Obama administration because Obama realized that these days a cell phone is a basic human necessity that it is very difficult to get by these days 
without a cell phone. So the Obama administration came up with a program so that any person who receives social services is also entitled to a cell phone. Now, here we, here we are so many years later, and it's possible for every homeless person, every person getting social services to have a cell phone, and it's very much needed because uh, I've spoken to social workers and I've Facebooked with them and I've received anecdotes from them of how a homeless person has given the shelter number or the soup kitchen number as to contact to a prospective employer and the employer calls and hears them say hello XYZ shelter and he actually rescinds the job offer. Now that's pretty ignorant of the employer but, but that aside uh, it's necessary for the homeless person to have their own cell phone so that they can get calls from employers without having to deal with that sort of bias and that sort of rejection and they can also access the internet to find out about different jobs and about housing and so forth and so on. So, let me put it like this. If you find a job that pays $44 an hour in DC or, or three times the minimum wage in your uh, prospect, uh, respective areas, you're probably not going to call me. You're going to get that job for yourself. Uh, furthermore, there, there's probably a uh, housing for, for all rally coming up very soon and I'm going to want to invite you to that so I'm going to need a phone for that too. For right now, there's something that you can do within the next 30 to 45 seconds when this video ends. So you can contact SafeLink or track phone, though those are a couple of the names of these Obama phones that I refer to, and you can have them come down to a shelter near you, and they will distribute those phones to homeless people, and then those homeless people can actually get connected to employment, and then get connected to affordable housing when that housing does exist. There you have it.